I don't necessarily think that there's a unique sound to bands from the Bay Area at this moment. There's shared inspiration. I mean, a lot of creative people doing like strange things, like just across the bridge in Oakland, there's a lot of uh, like noise shows, people like messing with strange machines in interesting ways. People have ears for it. Well, we met maybe, f yeah, five, six years ago in the, mm -hmm. in the dorms at San Francisco State. Our buddy, uh, his name's Julian, um, our former bandmate was in there with me and we were working on some stuff. And then Rob came in and he was trying to do some piano things. He's a music major and uh, we just got to talking. We started a band, started doing like shows <clears> at this <throat> club they got there called The Depot. It's like next to the student pub and did some like open mics and then some gigs and then uh, started sounding cool. Recorded a little EP and played around town. Sam here, is, this is his first time playing with us was this gig here. Yeah. And we're old friends, we went to kindergarten together and all that. Back in the day like, we'd be hanging out like in my garage or something with like the guitar amp that my dad had that like we'd just have it with way too much distortion or something where it just mm, didn't, yes. couldn't possibly sound good at all, but thought it was like the coolest thing ever. You know? <laughs> yeah, Very so, cool stuff. I mean, that's how, that's how we kind of got our start together. Growing up around music and, uh, and it being everywhere and like, I think it affected me in that it was all the music around me was very high quality. I think my at least my dad would say definitely that uh, it was very like good music going on, very like cool stuff. I really got into the Kinks and the Zombies and this band Easy Beats, and was just obsessed with all that stuff. And then I don't know I really dug Bowie's, uh, I guess like his the conceptual nature of his music. I'm interested by figures like that. Like pretty enigmatic guys. We just write with like art in mind first rather than just jamming and rocking. We try to get a lot of that across. We try to like be, um, to, to keep uh, an interesting tone on that side of things rather than just like writing a sick riff. My dad was a drummer and that's how I began to play drums. I studied jazz and I studied jazz in school. So I'm always kind of looking for ways to make the music sound not like jazzy, jazzy, but if some of my favorite drummers were listening to me, like, you know, Philly Joe Jones, Art Blakey, Max Roach, uh, Roy Haynes, you know, if they were looking at me, hopefully they would be proud. You know, with the music, trying to like tie it in kind of in a way that swings like jazz maybe, but it's rock and roll this time. So strange, you got a lot The first thing first is we're going to put out a collection of all the things that we've recorded over the past two years. We had the pleasure of working in like some pretty cool studios with this one fella named Jeremy Black in um, Oakland. So we had about six songs, two of which we released with Hit City down here in LA. And that was very cool. And we got four more and um, so we're gonna put them all out, maybe the beginning of summer, just put them all out like ourselves, just to have them all in one place for like Spotify and uh, iTunes and all that. Meanwhile, we recorded uh, a single for a compilation with um, this new Oakland label called Oakland Indie Mayhem. We worked with this guy named Jeff Saltzman, who's like a fantastic engineer, sort of a legend. And it's gonna come out maybe I think just in a month or two. I have no idea. I have no idea really either. But. Uh, it sounds very good, and I mean, we hope to work with them some more. And we've have a, we have another album written the full length, and so we're looking to go back in the studio very soon to get it going. Down. 